Welcome to section two. R is a powerful tool for data analysis. And the first step to working with data in R is to get the data into R. Suppose I have a CSV file on my computer and I want to load it into R. Since I'm running R on OS X, I could use the command V trick to change my working directory to the folder with the file. But it's also helpful to know how to navigate using the getwd and setwd functions. We'll also make use of the list files function which lists the files and folders in the current working directory. I want to get into my Google Drive folder, so I'm going to specify that in the setwd function. Next, I'm going to print out the folders in this Google Drive folder and navigate to projects. Next, I'm going to navigate to the top secret folder. And since I know there's a data folder there, I'm just going to add this folder into my setwd command. All right. I've arrived and I can now see the dataset of interest in my current working directory, the state.csv dataset. Since I'll be saving this code, I might as well save my current working directory in a setwd command at the top of my script. This way I won't need to set the directory in the future unless I change the working directory of my project files. Now that I'm ready to go, I'll load in the state.csv file using the readcsv function specifying the name of the file in quotation marks. When you're reading a CSV file into R, it's stored as a data matrix, which is more formally called a data frame in R. Just like with a regular matrix, I can use the dim function to see how many rows and columns are in the data set. There are 51 rows representing all US states and Washington DC, and 12 different columns representing the 12 different variables recorded for each state. I'll use the head function to print out the first two rows of the state dataset, just like I could do with a regular matrix. However, if I apply the length function, R will just return the number of variables in the dataset, which are represented by the columns. Data frames are one of the most common objects for holding data inside of R, and I can subset on them in ways similar to how I might subset a matrix. This is fine, but there are actually better ways with data frames. A new function for data frames worth remembering is the names function, which is used to access the variable names. Once you know the names of the variables, it's easy to extract out the entire variable using the dataset name, followed by a dollar sign, then followed by the variable name. Let's take a look at the smoke variable. The smoke variable is a numerical variable representing the percentage of people who smoke in each state. If I wanted, I could apply some standard functions like the mean or standard deviation function to get some summary information about this variable. In addition to subsetting with brackets, I can make use of the subset function. Here I'm going to examine only states with smoking rates higher than 25%. If I wanted, I could also specify that I only want to select a small number of columns. Next, I'll take a look at the party that won each state in the 2012 presidential election. This is in the press12 variable. Note that the press12 variable isn't numerical, yet it was stored as a smoke variable, which was a numerical object in the state data frame. Data frames can hold a different type of variable in each column, while a matrix can only hold a single data type for the entire matrix. Notice also that the output doesn't look like a regular string output which generally has quotation marks when it is printed out. Additionally, there's a listing at the bottom that indicates there are two levels. Output like this indicates that this is a factor variable, or a factor object. A factor object is a special kind of object that's sort of a blend between character and numerical variables. If you ever have substantial trouble working with factors in R, you can just convert the factor to a string with the asCharacter function. R will generally convert a character variable back into a factor variable when it is appropriate to do so. However, when R does do this conversion, it may notify you with a warning. Just read your warnings carefully and make sure that that's all that's happening. In the next video, we'll talk about ways to take a quick look at a data object inside of R, and we'll also take a look at date objects.